welcome to Facebook and to those who are on the line. I am Dr. Neil and it's turning. I just want to make sure it's connecting. It says live. I am Dr. Mary Neal. First of all, we will have prayer by Willie and then we have the reading of the word later. So we are ready for prayer, Willie. Father God, we thank you, Father. Oh, another Bible class. We thank you, Father, how you brought us through the holidays. Father God, we love you, Lord, Father, for what you're doing and what you're going to do. Father, we ask God to bless our sister that she may bring your word. Father, that she bring your anointed words and someone may get a good understanding of that word. Father God, we ask you, God, to strengthen our sister. Bless everyone on Facebook and online. Father, give them up nothing of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you all once again for joining me. Thank you, Willie, for prayer. Uh, the one usually read the word is out of town today. So let's see what we can read here. Uh, let's see. I think I had a scripture here I could actually read. Uh, I'm going to be sharing many scriptures. Uh, okay, John James 2.20 But foolish fellows, do you want to be shown that such faith apart from action is barren? Without work is dead. Wasn't Abraham declared righteous because of action when he offered up his son Isaac? Amen. Praise God. Uh, first of all, in case we have anyone out there that has not been adopted into the family of God, the Bible teaches us how we are justified by faith in Romans chapter number 4 and 5. If we believe on God and believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we are justified by our faith. Then the Bible teaches us we are to confess that which we believe. If we confess with our mouth the Lord Yeshua and believe in our hearts that God has raised him, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, thou shalt be saved. But out of the heart man believeth unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10 and 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai, that's the name of the Lord, shall be saved. Uh, Mark 16, 16, he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Proverbs 28 and 13 says, He that confesses and forsakes his sin shall have mercy, but he that confesses and forsakes not his sin will not prosper. 1 John 1 and 9 says, If we confess our sins, that may agree with God that sin is sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, some of the things we will be covering tonight as we go forward and what I do, I give out titles or subjects of things we're going to cover if it be the Lord's will. Because many times we say what we're going to do, but sometimes the Lord take us someplace else. And so we stopped off on last week in Show and Tell, that's coming from... The book revealed the unknown that's a book the lord gave me that i wrote uh i guess about a year and a half ago or a couple of years ago now uh show and tell reveal the unknown seeking after truth truth always found in the holy scriptures so uh what we're looking at tonight do you understand what you are reading we was teaching about that on last week in case you was not with us and you do not get an understanding of what we are sharing tonight. You can go back and look at that particular video or you can read Acts. I'm thinking chapter 7. I'm not looking at it. Do you understand what you're reading? As I said, we will expound on these as I go forward. Yeshua Jesus like a sheep led to the slaughter. The unit Ethiopian men received the word from Philip. Philip baptized the unit, but would he have done so if he did not believe with all his heart and confess the report of Yeshua Jesus? Isn't it re uh, really that they didn't understand, or isn't it rather that they didn't hear? No, they did hear. 
understanding scriptures. Ask Yeshua Jesus to make them known and invite someone to explain and welcome the message examining the scriptures every day to see if the things said and taught are true. That's coming out of Acts chapter number 17 and 11, although I paraphrased that. So let me read that again. I'm stumbling tonight, had a very busy day, babysitting and whatever. Didn't get very much sleep last night. So please bear with me tonight. Hallelujah. Help me, Holy Ghost. Understanding scriptures. Ask Yahshua Jesus to make them known. And invite someone to explain and welcome the message examining the scripture every day to see if the things said and taught are true. Again, paraphrase in Acts 17 and verse 11. You are welcome to submit your prayer requests and call in on the line. We're on the line as well. You can, If you cannot contact us or connect to us on Facebook, you can call 212-775-7031, ID one prompt, 294-147-POUND. That's out there for you to see as well. So again, just in case you can't see it, I'm going to uh, give that to you again in case you have a question, a prayer request, a comment, no foolish talking. 712-775-7031. When prompt, 294-147-POUND. Now, if you have these things, you can ask them at the end. I will not let people interfere while I'm teaching because it can take me away from where the Spirit is leading me. So just in case, if you have questions, comment prayer requests, or whatever, bring those forward at the end, or you can post them right here on Facebook on the comment. I can see them now. We are doing a, a new thing now on Facebook. It's something they started new, I guess, or I thought, just found out about it. And so it'll show me who's on there, the questions, the comment, or whatever. So I'll look at the screen every once in a while. If the Lord lead me to answer those why I'm teaching, I will do so. If not, I will do it at the end. Amen. So again, we are continuing with, do you understand what you're reading? Yeshua Jesus, like a sheep, led to the slaughter. The eunuch Ethiopian man received the word from Philip. Philip baptized the eunuch, but would he has done so if he did not believe with all his heart and confess the report of Yeshua Jesus? Isn't it rather that they didn't hear? No, they did hear. Understanding scripture again, ask Yeshua Jesus to make them known and invite someone to explain and welcome the message examining the scripture every day to see if the things said and taught are true. Well, when we read that, we we'll know how uh, people was teaching, but they had a group of people that would listen to what was being said, what was being taught, and then what those people would do, they would go back and look in the scripture. That's what you mean, examining, as Yeshua says, search the scripture. So they are examining the scripture to see if what people was teaching, if it was true or not. Well, many times we think something could be true, and it might not be true because we're not examining, searching the scripture. Or sometimes we think things are true, but they just might not be true. Uh, because we are not searching the uh, scripture. That's why I said the truth is always in the word of God. Which means if I want to know truth, only thing I need to do is get my Bible, ask the Lord to give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. As Solomon said, give your servant an understanding heart. And because he asked for an understanding heart, the Lord gave him that. That was the most important thing. And then he gave him what he didn't ask for. Well, we know many times we ask for what we want. Not so much what we need. We are to ask for what we need first. And then we can ask 
for what we want because the Lord says, bring all your cares unto me for I care for thee. But we want what we need. We need the truth. We need that. We need wisdom. We need knowledge. We need understanding. We need Yeshua Jesus. We need these things. And so, so many times, we just ask for uh, stuff, you know, new house, new car, new shoes, new clothes, new boyfriend, new husband, and so forth, new wife. And sometimes we are not really asking for those more important things. And that's why Yeshua says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And all these things will be added. That's what happened with Solomon. He asked for what he needed. Then the Lord added some things that he did not even ask for. So again, we're continuing. We stopped off in the uh, in the book, Show and Tell, on page 15. So we'll continue from that. But we only went through, I think, maybe one subject because the Lord gave me more information as i said i'm teaching out of the book but when the spirit lead me to share other things i will and the most thing most of these scriptures that i'm going to share they are somewhere in the book they just not on that particular page and so many times what happened when we study scriptures we can find many cross reference that we don't even have we do not even need to look for them other words, when I'm studying the Word of God, the Spirit just bring references to me, and I use those references. Well, when I did the book, maybe I didn't put it there, but I know Acts chapter 7 is in the book. And some of the chapters, we actually go by, uh, we go through it, and we expound on some very important chapters, not many, not large ones. But some chapters we expound. So what we do, we take information, those references, and we put them in one place where, say, as I have here, say if I'm looking at John chapter 3, uh, 16 maybe, uh, maybe I'll go to Romans or something and use a verse that goes along with that so it's right there. So when I study God's word, what I do I use key word searches. Words are very powerful. Words are so important. And many times when we're looking at the Word of God, we do not pause when it comes to certain words. We do not look at meanings of that word. How important that word is. Now, all, the, all God's Word is important. Like I said, everything in the Bible is true. It's just some things we do not need to do. But it happened. It's true. And so when we study the Word of God, we look at these little words that can change the way we receive it. It doesn't change the meaning, but the way we receive it. As we said, we look at the word should, shall, may, will, and so forth. We look at the word if and but. We look at the word uh, uh, thou shall, you know, shalt, S-H-A-L-T, which is a word we do not even use. But that word is actually in scripture. Thou shalt not do this. Thou shalt not do that. Which means, it does not mean, and it's not teaching us, we will not do it. It's just teaching us something that we, we would say today we should not do. So S-H-A-L-T instead of S-H-O-U-L-D. So again, we stop under the subject. Oops, I'll go back. Ethiopian, which means a unit, received, confessed, and was baptized. I believe, what did he believe? I believe that Jesus Christ, in other words, Yeshua the Messiah, is the Son of God. That's coming from Acts chapter number 8. Do you understand what you are reading do you understand what you are reading do i understand what i am reading so what did the unit say this was a question that philip asked him remember we stopped off here last week if you followed me and something just keep says too low fps and i don't know what all these things mean fps what is fps i have no idea but it said dismiss. I'm dismissing that and just keep popping back up. 
So I don't know what that means. So I got to look that up and try to find out what it means so I can try to correct it. So again, when Philip, when the unit, uh, Philip, well, we remember we was sharing where uh, the spirit told Philip to draw himself to the chariot where the unit was. <clears throat> and the unit he was reading, he was reading something. But he did not understand what he was reading. Well, he was reading. Well, many times we are reading the Bible, but we do not have no understanding, even though we are trying to read the Bible. That's why I said, ask Yeshua to give us understanding. So although he was trying to read, now he was coming from a place of worship. He was coming from Jerusalem, so that show us he knew something, because he had went to a place of worship. And on his way back, that's when the <clears throat> Spirit told Philip to draw himself to this unit that was trying to read, or reading, but could not understand. So when Philip asked him, do you understand what you are reading? He said, how can I? He did not say, as we said last week, he did not say, well, I understand what I'm reading. I have the wisdom. I have the knowledge. I have the understanding. He did not say that. What he said was, how can I? And that's why sometimes we need people to expound on the scripture to help us to get understanding. But the Lord will give us understanding if we ask him and we have an open mind and we are searching for truth. He said, how can I? Said uh, He said, unless someone explains it to me. And he invited Philip to climb up and sit with him. In other words, Philip go and ask him, do you understand? He did not say, get away from me. Uh, I'm doing fine on my own. He invited Philip to come up, which means climb up and sit with and sit with him. Now the portion of the scripture that he was reading was this. Now it, it tell us what he's reading. So what he is reading is from the book of Isaiah, as some says Isaiah. He was like a sheep. Who was like that sheep? Yeshua the Messiah. He was like a sheep led to the slaughter. Like a lamb. Well, remember, he is the lamb of God. Like a lamb silent before the shearer. He does not open his mouth. Well, we know there was time. When Yeshua was led uh, to be crucified, there were times that he opened his mouth when he went to the judgment seat with Pilate. When Pilate asked him it, who he was, you know, if he was the son of God, you know, let him know and so forth. So Yeshua did open his mouth at some time. But when he was led at, to be slaughtered, he did not open his mouth at some time. So it says, he does not open his mouth. Well, when you go to Revelation chapter 5, verse 12. And they shouted out, worthy is the slaughtered lamb. Because remember, he read it from Isaiah that Yeshua was slaughtered, Jesus. Well, when you go to Revelation chapter 5, this is when they are shouting out, worthy is the slaughtered lamb to receive. In other words, Yeshua was slaughtered, but he had a promise from God that he would receive certain things if he gave his life for the sin of the world. And so he received power, riches, wisdom, strength, honor, glory, and praise. So those are seven spirits. And again, those seven spirits were sent down to earth that we could have those seven spirits as well. Yeshua, Jesus like a sheep led to the slaughter. And as a lamb before his shearer is silent, so he does not open his mouth. He was humiliated and denied justice. Well, many times we are humiliated. Sometimes we do not get justice the way we should get it. Sometimes it could be bad. Uh, but it said he was denied justice. Because we know that they misunderstood what Yeshua was saying. They called, said, said that he was blaspheming. 
because he said, I am the son of God. They misunderstood what he was saying, so he was humiliated. He denied justice. And then it says, who will tell about his descendant since his life has been taken from the earth? Other words, Yeshua's life was taken from the earth. That means he died. But it said, who will tell about his descendant since his life has been taken from the earth? Uh, AMP. In humiliation, his judgment was taken away. Justice was denied him. Who will describe his generation for his life is taken away? From the earth. So we are still, or should be, still describing, still telling people how Yahshua life was taken from the earth, how he died for the sins of the world, because it was written, one should die for the sin of the world. So how many of us are teaching that it was the Son of God that died for the sin of the world? Sometimes if you teach it with the Son of God that died for the sin of the world, you will be humiliated. People will think you lying. People will think you do not know what you are talking about. What Isaiah was reading to the Ethiopian is from Isaiah chapter 53. As we said last week, please read the entire chapter. So I'm quoting some verses from there and also some of the scripture as well. And it's in here, I'm thinking at least four times. Isaiah 53, 1. Who believes? Now when you look at some scripture, it says who has believed, past ten. Then you look at some uh, translation, who believes? Because maybe one time I believed, but am I continuing to believe? So it says, who believes our report? To whom is the arm of Adonai revealed? So we know Yeshua is that arm of God that came out from God. So again, it says, who believe our report? To whom is the arm of Adonai revealed? You find that, go right to John chapter 12 and 38. Complete Jewish Bible I'm reading it from. In order that what Isaiah, Isaiah, the prophet has said might be fulfilled. Adonai, who has believed our report? Notice what it said. Adonai, who have believed our report? To whom has the arm of Adonai been revealed? You go right to Romans 10 and 16. Complete Jewish Bible. The problem is that they haven't all paid attention to the good news. And obeyed it. For Isaiah, Isaiah says, Adonai, who has trusted, let me believe, what he has heard from us. And so here, you see, it's in Romans 10 and 16, it said the problem is they haven't all paid attention. Well, yesterday in our service, we was teaching about where the Lord said, this is what I command of you, obey my voice. In other words, pay attention and obey my voice. So here, it let us know they had heard but they just didn't pay attention, which means many times we hear, but we are not really paying good attention to what is being read, what is being taught, what is being said, what is being preached. So we need to pay attention, but we need to read the scripture to see if those things that are said are true or false. So I'm reading again, Romans 10, 16, and a couple more verses. The problem is that they haven't all paid attention to the good news and obeyed it. In other words, it's not enough to just pay attention. We need to obey what we hear. For Isaiah, Isaiah says, Adonai, who have trusted what he has heard from us? 
King James, but they have not obeyed the gospel, letting us know the good news again is the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who have believed our report. So the report went out. Not just when we get to the book of Matthew or whatever. The report, the report had been going out for a long time. You see it in, as we say, the Old Testament, Isaiah. It went out. People just did not re, uh, receive and believe the report of the Lord. Romans 10, 17, 17 through 19, I'm reading. So trust, believe, so trust comes from what is heard. That's what trust comes from, what is heard. And what is heard comes through a word proclaimed about the Messiah. Look at that again. So trust comes from what is heard because faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. And what is heard comes through a word proclaimed about the Messiah. Isn't it rather that they didn't hear? No. They did hear. Well, remember them. Anytime they heard, but they just did not obey. Sometimes people heard, even today, they just do not understand. Uh, 18. But I say, isn't it rather that they didn't hear? No, they did hear. Their voice is going out throughout the whole world. And their words to the end of the earth. As we covered this sometime before, uh, which means many times we say certain people have not heard the word of God. Uh, the word have not went to certain countries, certain states, or whatever. But look what the word of God says, and I believe the word of God. Their voices has gone out throughout the whole world. And their words to the end of the earth. That means God's word is all over the world, people. It has went out through the entire earth. God would not allow his word just to be heard in America and not heard in England and not heard in Jamaica and many other places. He would not allow that. His word had went out through all the world. But what happened, maybe some people did not believe it. They did not receive it. They did not teach it. And so maybe everybody didn't hear. Well, we know everyone did not hear because people are being born today that have not heard. But the word is still out there. God can speak to us through his spirit. It does not have to be through man's mouth all the time. He can speak directly to a person's spirit. And so he says again, but I say, isn't it rather that Israel didn't understand? Notice that. It went out through the whole world. Israel was scattered throughout the world. But he said, but I say, isn't it rather that Israel didn't understand? In other words, they heard it. They just did not understand it. As today, many of us are hearing the word of God and we are rejecting the word of God because we really do not understand. Understanding scripture again. Ask Yeshua Jesus to make them known and invite someone to explain and welcome the message. Examining, which means searching the scripture every day. To see if the things said and taught are true. That's how we find out if things that are said, things that are taught. If they are true or not. But many times what happened. People hear something they never heard before. I had a lady years ago, many years ago that said to me when I was teaching. And she said I never heard it that way before. In other words she had heard something. But she had not heard it that way. Many times we have heard something. But we haven't heard it a certain way. Maybe we have not heard it according to the word of God. Maybe we heard it according to a person, according to a denominational teaching. We say, uh, I show you the way. This is the way. Do it this way. 
And it's only one way when Yeshua say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So we we'll see what happened with this unit, how he received Yeshua. This is how we receive Yeshua. Isaiah 53 and 1 again, who have believed our report and to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. Who believe our report to whom is the arm of Adonai revealed. For before him, this is still in Isaiah. For before him, before him who? Before God. He grew, who grew? Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. He grew up like a young plant, like a root out of a out of dry ground. Where I tell people go to Proverbs, I'm not looking at it, I think at Proverbs chapter eleven, how Yeshua grew up with his father and how he was taught by his father. I am almost sure at Proverbs chapter eight. If you have not read it, please do so. He was not well formed. Who was Yeshua the Messiah? Or especially handsome. We saw him. They saw who? Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. But his appearance did not attract us. That's why I tell people again, do not read Isaiah as in the past. Read it as now. Read people say, I mean, in the future, because many times we look at it as a prophecy that is going to happen, but many times things have happened already. So that's why we go back and we can see how Yeshua died before the foundation of the world, but it was not manifest to many people. So it goes on, it says, For before him he grew up like a young plant, like a root out of dry ground. He was not well formed, past tense, or especially handsome. We saw him, past tense, but, but, but his appearance did not attract us, past tense. People despised, past tense, and avoided him. A man of pain with acquainted with illness, uh, past tense. Like someone from whom people turn their faith. He was despised, past tense. We did not value him, past tense. In fact, it was, past tense, our diseases, transgression, he bore. Our pains from which he suffered, past tense. Yet, we regarded, past tense, him as punished, stricken, and afflicted by God. So here you see... They regarded Yeshua punished, stricken, and afflicted by God. Where the Bible says it pleased God to crush him. But he was wounded, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. He was wounded. Now he's going to be wounded, past tense. But he was wounded because of our crimes. Crushed because of our sin. The discipline that makes us whole fell on him and by his bruises as king james and by his stripes we are healed well remember we spoke about that i think last week when the bible said uh stripes is for the food back that mean correction that's what it is stripes like as kids we spank them as we say i don't say beat we spank them Remind me of the little one. I kept taking a little belt belt at her today. Like, okay, don't touch that anymore, huh? She go right back and touch it again. We all like sheep went astray. Past ten. We all like sheep went astray. You know, when you have sheep and you don't have anybody to take care of them, they wonder. They go astray. But the Bible says the Lord have turned us back, brought us back to our own way. And so here again, it says we're like sheep went astray. We turn, past tense, each one to his own way. Well, that's what we are like many times. We are like sheep. We're just out doing our own things. We're going astray. We turn each one to his own way. Uh, my way is is the better way my way is the lord's way when my way may not be his way yet adonai that god laid on him 
the guilt laid on who? Yeshua the Messiah. Laid on him the guilt of all of us. Though mistreated, Yeshua was mistreated by many. When we serve the Lord and we are trying to obey the Lord, we will be mistreated as well. <clears throat> Though mistreated, he was submissive. That means he submitted himself unto God. He even submitted himself unto people sometimes. That's why the Bible says he found favor with God and man. That's in the book of Acts. Though mistreated, he was submissive. He did not open his mouth. Like a lamb led to be slaughtered, like a sheep silent before its shearer, he did not open his mouth. After forcible arrest and sentencing, he was taken away, and none of his generation protest. Noted. <clears throat> it says none of his generation protest. Because you read in this, and you we read it in the past because we know when they came to take Yeshua to have him to the judgment seat to have him crucified, we know Peter did protest that. Peter cut off the servant ear, and Yeshua took the ear and put it back on the man. He said, "He that killed by the he that killed by the sword shall die by the sword." So we know Peter did protest that. But remember, things was being fulfilled. But this happened in the past. And so it goes on to say, He being cut off from the land of the living. In other words, he died from those who was living. For the crime of my people. So how do you, we understand that? Yeshua was cut off from the land of the living for the crime of God's people. Who deserve the punishment themselves. In other words, because he had done no evil. <clears throat> there was no wickedness in his mouth. There was no lying in his mouth. But he died for the sins again of the whole world. He was given a grave among the wicked. Well, remember, two transgressions with, uh, transgressors was hanging on each side of him. They was transgressors to that broke the laws of God. That's what a transgressor is. He was given a grave among the wicked. And his death, in his death, he was with a rich man. Although he had done no violence and had said nothing deceptive. In other words, Yeshua did never said anything to deceive people. That's what deceptive is. Someone deceiving people. So everything he spoke was true. But what was happening? They just did not understand. As the word went out. But they did not understand. They thought he was a deceiver. Remember what, what they said? This deceiver said. Yeshua was not a deceiver. He never tried to deceive anyone about anything. He always spoke the truth of God. He spoke the truth that was in the word of God. 10. Yet it pleased Adonai. In other words, it pleased God to crush him with illness. That's why the Bible said it pleased God to afflict him. To see. Now, now I love this because it tells us why God did what he did. To see if he, if who, Yeshua the Messiah, Jesus Christ. So to see if he would present himself as a guilt offering. Well, we know Yeshua said, no man took my life, I gave it freely. So God afflicted him to see if he would present himself as that gift offering. Because Yeshua had a choice as we have choices. If he does, he will see his offspring. In other words, if Yeshua did what God commanded him to do, he will see people that sprung out from him. That's why the Bible speaks of Yeshua is the offspring from God. And we are the offsprings from Yeshua, the Messiah, Jesus the Christ. 
And he will prolong his days. Why? Because he did what he did. He had a promise that God was going to raise him never to die again. That's why the Bible says he died once and for all. So his days are still being prolonged. We're just going through. Our days will end one day. But if we wake up in heaven, in a better place, we will never die. We'll live forever. If we wake up in a worse place, we will live forever. But the only thing different, blessings in heaven, torments in hell. And at his hand, at his hand, God's hand, uh, Yeshua's hand, Adonai, desire will be accomplished. So, at Yeshua's hand, God desire would be accomplished. At this ordeal, after this ordeal, he will see satisfaction because he had to go through something. He had to suffer. By his knowing pain and sacrifice, my righteous, God's righteous servant, Yeshua the Messiah, make many righteous, not all righteous. It makes what? Many righteous. It is for their sin that he suffered. AMP. The righteous one, which is Yeshua the Messiah, my servant, God's servant, shall justify the many, making them righteous, upright before God. That's what righteous is. Right standard with God. Upright with God. In right standard with him. A 53.12. Therefore, I will assign him a share with the great. Who's going to assign? God going to assign Yeshua the Messiah a share with the great. He will divide the spoil with the mighty for having exposed himself to death and being counted among the sinners, remember the transgressors, while actually bearing the sin of many and interceding for the offender. The unit, Ethiopian man, received the word from Philip. How we receive the word from God. How we receive the word as the unit did. Acts 8.34 The unit said to Philip, Here's my question to you. Is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Well, remember when Philip goes up and asks him, do he understand what he's reading? Then Philip started expounding the scripture. So now he asks a question. He says, then the unit said to Philip, here is my question to you. Is the prophet talking about himself or someone else? Well, he wasn't calling Philip a prophet. Philip a reading out of the book of Isaiah. So he's speaking about the prophet Isaiah. Remember again, Philip was reading from Isaiah the prophet. Then Philip started to speak. Beginning with that passage, he went on to tell him the good news about Yeshua, Jesus. As they was going down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, look, like he's excited about the water. Look, here is some water. Is there any reason why I shouldn't be immersed? In other words, Philip explained the word of God to him. Evidently, he told him about the water. So when he see the water, he get excited. So he said, is there any reason why I shouldn't be emerged, which means baptized? See, here's water. What does hinder me to be baptized? Look, water. What forbid me from being baptized? 37. And watch what Philip says. And Philip said, if, Notice, if, that word, remember we said, those little words are very important. If you believe with all your heart, you may. He answered, what was his confession? 
I believe that Yeshua the Messiah is the Son of God. This is why he was baptized. Remember, Paul would tell us we are baptized for the dead. That's why the Bible says we are to be baptized. Baptism started again in the book of Exodus. And that let us know we are to be baptized. We are to fulfill the word of God. Philip baptized the unit. Now watch this. Philip baptized the unit. But would he have done, had done so if he did not believe with all his heart and confess the report of Yeshua Jesus? No, I don't think so. That's why Philip says, if you believe. If. Well, if he had said, no, I don't believe that. Do you actually think Philip would have baptized him? No. The unit was returning from Jerusalem for to worship. Remember, Philip started to speak, beginning with the passage. He went on to tell him the good news about Yeshua Jesus. Ethiopian man, Eunice said, look, here is some water. Is there any reason why I shouldn't be emerged baptized? And Philip said, if you believe with all your heart, you may. The unit man confessed, I believe that Yeshua Messiah is the Son of God. Romans 10, 9 and 10, I quote it all the time. Complete Jewish Bible. If again. That if you acknowledge publicly with your mouth, that's what the unit did. That Yeshua is Lord and trust in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be delivered. Well, King James said, we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Well, again, letting us know that we're saved need to be delivered. So, he was delivered when he confessed. He was delivered when he believed with all his heart. But with the heart, and that's why I love other translation. For with the heart, one goes on trusting. When he leaves Philip, He's still trusting. Many times we trust, but do we continue to trust? It said, with the heart one goes on trusting and thus continue toward righteousness, while with the mouth one keeps on making public acknowledgement. Are we continuing to make that acknowledgement, acknowledgement, and thus continue toward deliverance? In other words, we're reading that again. But with the heart, remember, out of the heart, man believes unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. This is complete Jewish Bible. But with the heart, one goes on trusting and thus continue toward righteousness. While with the mouth, one keeps on making public acknowledgement and thus continue toward deliverance. Because deliverance is not just a day thing, an hour thing, a minute thing, is continuation. Goes on making confession. Goes on acknowledging. Goes on being delivered. And that's why King James says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in the heart that God has raised him from the dead, Yeshua the Messiah, thou shalt be saved. Acts 8.38 he ordered the chariot to stop. Once he, he believed with all his heart, once he confessed, this is when Philip ordered the chariot to stop. Then both Philip and the unit went down into the water, and Philip immersed him. In other words, many times people are, say they are baptizing people in a different way. But if we look at scripture, we can see how they was baptized. Yeshua went into the water when John baptized him. Yeshua came up out of the water. The unit and Philip goes into the water. And then they come what? Out of the water. He ordered the chariot to stop. Then both Philip and the unit went down into the water. Well, we know it came out. They didn't stay there. And Philip emerged him. In other words, Philip baptized him because of his faith, because of his confession. When they came up out of the water, see, we know they came up, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. 
other words, Philip didn't hang around anymore. Philip was gone. He didn't see him anymore. You know, there are some times we see people, they may bring a word to us. We might not ever see that person again. <clears throat> but it says, when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The unit saw no more of him. Never seen him again. Because he continued on his way. He didn't uh, uh, say, uh, snatch me up too. Let me follow Philip. But he continued on his way full of joy. That's what we are to do. Continue on our way. If someone share the word of God to us, we're to continue on our way. We don't have to hang around that person all the time. Because sometimes God will let you meet someone, share a word with someone, and you just might not ever see them again. But Philip showed up at Asadon and continued proclaiming the good news as he went through all the town until he came to Caesarea. Caesarea. Now, <clears throat> he didn't stop. You know, sometimes we say, well, I got someone into faith. I always say, you know, we say we saved someone. We say someone got delivered because of their own faith. Someone got delivered because they confess and repent. Someone got delivered when they heard the word of God. And that's why when you read the book of Acts, it says when they heard the word of God, the Holy Ghost came upon them. Sometimes they would lay their hands on someone and the Holy Ghost would come upon them. But when they heard the word, they had to receive the word for the Holy Ghost to come upon them. That's why the Bible said the Holy Ghost had not fell on none of them because they had not confessed Yeshua to the Messiah. So when the unit confessed Yeshua the Messiah and said that he believed he was the Son of God, that's when he was baptized. And as I said last week, I do not baptize people until I find out what they believe. I'm not just going to say, come to church or... I'm going to meet you someplace, uh, say the sinner's prayer, <clears throat> and we will baptize you. Uh, people come and say, I came to join the church. We do not ask them what they believe. That's what they did. They joined the church. It doesn't mean they joined Yahshua and Jesus. They joined the church. But what we should ask people, if someone says, I came to join the church, that's fine. But we need to teach them about Yeshua, who he is. We are to teach them the way. The way is to be justified by your faith. So he was justified because he believed. Well, he, he probably was justified already because he was coming from worship. He was just reading and he didn't understand that part, what he was reading. But when Philip explained it to him, he believed. And he confessed. So that's what we are to do. So that's why I go through these steps. When I come on Facebook. Uh, I go through justification. In Romans chapter 4. and Romans chapter 5. If you believe on God. And believe that God raised his son. And showed the Messiah. The Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. You are justified by your faith. Many people start out and say. Are you saved? And then they say. Say the sinner's prayer. I always say sinners' prayers for those who are in Yeshua the Messiah. We must be justified. We must do it God's way. It's only one way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father himself by me. So God's way is to be justified, first of all, like Abraham was justified. He is our example, our father Abraham. Abraham believed God, and it was credit to his account. It was counted to him for righteousness, letting us know he didn't do everything at that time. God said, take your son, offer him for a sacrifice. Abraham believed that. But then Abraham had to put work with his faith. Abraham take his son, and he got ready to uh, uh, to bring down the knife and kill his son. Until the, uh, the voice said, Abraham, lay not your hand on your son. Now I know thy fear is God. So Abraham did many things. That wasn't the only thing he did just believing on God. 
He did many things. That's why the Bible said his faith was so strong. He believed even if he took his son's life, God was going to raise him right back from the dead. Why? Because he had a promise. And so we are to have that type of faith. We're going to have the faith of our father, Abraham. Abraham didn't just start out in faith. When he started out in faith, it was just credit. But he continued in faith. That's why I tell people, read not uh, he, just Hebrews uh, uh, chapter uh, 1, verse 1. Read the chapter. And you see all those different examples of faith. Many people had faith. People have faith in the devil. If they believe in the devil, but it's not the right faith, you shouldn't believe in the devil. You should believe on God. But people have some type of faith, but it may not be the right faith to get them adopted out of Egypt, which represents the world. So if I believe on God and I believe that God raised his son, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, I'm justified by my faith. Then I am to confess that which I believe as the unit did. He believed and confessed. That's why Romans 10 and 9 through 10 says, If that, if it's there, don't look over that. If we confess with our mouth, acknowledge the Lord Yeshua, the Lord Jesus, and believe in our hearts that God has raised him, Yeshua the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. See, the word says shalt. It's H-A-L-T. And then it said, Out of the heart, man believeth. As he said, they go on and continue to deliver it. It says, Out of the heart, man believeth unto righteousness. And confession is made unto salvation until we are delivered. Then I always say, Romans 10 and 13 is your and my key word. Whosoever shall call upon the name of Adonai, which means the name of the Lord, shall be saved, shall be delivered, which means once I'm in Yeshua the Messiah, the devil is coming after me. I'm the call upon the Lord. Take those cares unto the Lord. Remember, when they called unto the Lord, they cried unto the Lord. One time the Lord woke up like a drunk man out of his sleep. But also there was a time he said, call on who you serve. You're not serving me, so you're serving the enemy, you serve in the Satan, so you call upon him. And so many times we are calling upon the Lord when we are not even serving the Lord. That's for those of us who are in Yeshua the Messiah to call upon the Lord for he care for us. Many times, you know, we going through stuff, but we will not take our cares unto the Lord. We take them to everyone else. Lord, I'm sick. Uh, so I need to go to a doctor. Yeah, you're sick. You need to go to the doctor, but call upon the Lord and tell him to send you to the right doctor. Hallelujah. Yeshua is the great physician. He can heal us if we trust and believe. He can deliver us from any type of sin if we believe and receive and obey. That's why the Bible says all sins shall be forgiven man except one. Blaspheme or the Holy Ghost. And we know that is when the Spirit of God tell us who Yeshua is and we resist that report of the Lord, we are blaspheming. That's why Paul said, you blaspheme, your blood be upon your own head. Because he gave them the truth. He gave them the report of the Lord, but they resist that. And so that's what we need to do. We need to make sure we are not rejecting the truth. We are to receive the truth. But we are to reject error. We are to reject lies. So you go to 1 John 1 and 9. If again, if we confess our sin, if we agree with God that sin is sin. That's what confession means. Not to say I'm sorry. If we confess our sin, he is faithful. He is just to forgive us of our sin. And to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Because he said, I will thoroughly cleanse my floor. If you abide in me and my word abide in you, I'm going to clean you up. But in order for that to happen, the word need to stay put. The word need to abide, get settled in me. And then we go to... Uh, Proverbs 28, 13, letting us know again the same thing. We need to confess and repent. 
he that confesses, continuation, and forsake his sin, me repent, shall have mercy. But he that confesses not, and forsakes not his sin, will not prosper. So I tell people, how more clearer can that be? Instead of us listening to lying spirits and all our sins are forgiving us past, present, and future, that are lie from the pits of hell. All our sins are forgiven us when we confess and repent. That's when it, forgive, it is forgiven us. That's why the Bible says you have forgot that you was purged from your old sin. That's why it speak of past sin, old sin, future sin is do the do the time you do the, do the crime you do the time so when i sin i am to acknowledge that as david said i acknowledge my sin other words he came clean but we'll say i didn't do it or i didn't know that i did it and god is merciful god is grace gracious all the sins that i do uh went away when i came to christ no nope. your past sin that's what's forgiven us when we are when we believe our past sin, when we're justified, when we're in Yeshua the Messiah, our past sin is forgiven us. But every other sin we do, we need to agree with God that sin is sin and repent. That's why why we have the Spirit of God to let us know when we are out of God's will. Hallelujah. Anyone have any questions or comments? Anyone? Questions to come in online? I don't know what's happening with Facebook. I saw one person on there. They went off. So I hope this thing is going live again. I'm not having hey, a problem. So if I could say something that brief on that. Uh, as you were reading, and if whatever God say, you might not understand, but take him as his word and, and be obedient to what he said from his word. You know, that's the whole thing you were really teaching on, you know, on uh, understanding. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, that's, that's all I need to say on that. Just take it as his word, something we don't understand. That's right. But take it as his word and just be obedient. Amen. Amen. Thank you for your comment, brother. Praise God. Uh, once again, in case you have not confessed your Yeshua Messiah, repeat after me. I confess with my mouth the Lord Yeshua, and I believe in my heart that God has raised Yeshua Jesus from the dead. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord. Oh, I pray people forgive me for um, I'm babbling at my mouth today because I'm so tired. So God, please forgive me. Thank you for giving me strength to try to bring forth the word tonight. And God, if anyone do not understand your word, let them search the scripture. Even when they do understand, let them search the scriptures to see if those things that were said and taught are true. Because your word is always written down in scripture. Your truth can be found if we search it out. Father, I thank you for the love that you bestowed upon us. That we are to be your sons and your daughters. And Yeshua says, I call you no more servant, but I call you sons. I call you no more servant, but I call you friend. For a servant knows not what his master does. But because you are my friend, everything my father has made known unto me, I have made known unto you. God, I thank you that Yeshua make his word known unto me. I thank you, O oh God, for a hunger and a thirst after your word of hunger and a thirst after righteousness. So Father, I pray that you bless each and every person out there today. Go before them, make every crooked road straight. Give them that hunger and thirst after righteousness so they can be filled. Father, we continue to pray, O oh God, for the people in Florida. They are having understanding bad weather, O oh God, trying to find the bodies. Lord, comfort the people's hearts. Let them be encouraged, even knowing, oh God, that right now it's very hard to find someone alive. God, comfort their broken heart. The Lord giveth, the Lord taketh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So, Lord, we ask you to move by your spirit. 
And through this, Lord, awaken someone's spirit, Lord. Let them know that life is not promised to them. That we never know when we are going to leave this place. As we listen to the news today, so many people just got murdered over the weekend. Oh, God, have mercy. God, just destroy that evil spirit of murder, oh God. Because your word said, thou shalt not murder. God, destroy that spirit of hatred. If we hate our brothers, we are murderers. God, destroy that spirit, oh God, that causes people to separate themselves because of racism, because of denomination, because of, of Democrats and Republicans. Lord, have mercy on this country in the name of Yeshua. Lord, we know you prayed, Yeshua, before you left here. That, Father, I pray that they all be one, even as we are one. So, God, let us become one. Those who are followers, your son, your short Messiah, let us be one, O oh God. When people ask us what denomination we are from, let us say we are one with Yeshua the Messiah. God, I pray, O oh God, that you continue to move by your spirit, pour out of your spirit, as Yeshua says. The word says, in the last days, I will pour out of my spirit upon my sons and daughters, and they shall prophesy. I will pour out of my son upon your sons and daughters, and they shall prophesy. God, I thank you that I am your daughter. Thank you for pouring out of your spirit. Continue to pour out of your spirit on me that I run over on someone else. God, I bless you and I give you praise in the name of your holy son, Yeshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, brother, for being there. Love you with the love of Yeshua the Messiah. I'm going to uh, end this. So in case you need to talk to me, if you want to hold on for a few minutes, let me just end the video. Amen.